What's up everyone? Hope you're having a great day. In today's episode, I'd like to share with you a podcast discussion between myself and David Morin. He is a fitness influencer. He's been on the cover of over 30 fitness magazines, but he's much more than that. He's a dad. He's an overall great guy. He does a lot of introspective work and we get into a lot of those discussions in this particular episode. So I hope you enjoy it. Hit this video with a thumbs up if you haven't already done so add it to your favorites, share it with your friends, and check out all the links in the description below for David and more episodes of We The Eater Podcast. And if you are interested in seeing more discussions such as this one, comment down below and let us know. Otherwise, thank you for watching in advance. I appreciate it and I hope you enjoy. Got that Zen thing in the background too, or what, what is that? Yeah, that's uh, so that's some kanji that my uh, sensei, he wrote out for me, Rob Williams. He's um, mm -hmm. so he studied under a guy named Dr. Glenn Morris, which Dr. I don't know if you're familiar with like the old school ninja schools, which were like popular in the 80s. But there's uh, the 34th Grandmaster of uh, uh, Bujikan Ninpo uh, is um, Hatsumi sensei. And he studied under him and then came to America and then basically gave me one of those. And it's basically just says like, uh, it's the way of the enduring heart. It's uh, the symbol for uh, a blade over your heart. So even though you're every day, you you know, your heart is kind of facing the sword, you'll endure, you'll prevail. So. Wow. That's powerful. I, I love, I love like calligraphy and stuff like that for that reason. It's because it's, if these symbols conveyed in kind of like a text message, you know, in a way, and it says so much, it's so impactful in such a little tiny, you know, space. It's beautiful. Yeah. 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 They really have that, um, that the art of communication down in, mm -hmm. in Japan and the Asian countries, you know, mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. I've been yeah. big into like Zen books and, and whatnot as well. And, um, just like the way of the samurai Bushido and all these other things. And I just love listening to them and just the mm. philosophy there. It's so beautiful. Um, yeah. yeah. And deadly. And yes, deadly. at the same time, you know, funny enough, I'm listening to one of the books and it's just people getting their head chopped off throughout the whole thing. There was actually this one part that stuck with me. It's uh, that the true master swordsman, it, it like the preparation involved in cutting someone's head. It, it, if you do it in a way, the master swordsman, it's he almost dissolves his ego in the process. And in mm. doing that, he allows the person with the head being chopped off to dissolve their ego. And it's just a swift motion. It's just like a, a breeze, you know, something in, in, in the wind. And it's just this natural. And, and they see this execution as such a beautiful process. But I'm yeah. listening to this book like everyone's dying, you know, like, but it's beauty, but it's everyone's dying. So it's really yeah. neat. Yeah, yeah it's, it. it's refreshing how that tradition, the samurai tradition, really, uh, it, it honored the fact that you could take another warrior's life. And I think, like, you see that in nature so much, you know, obviously you see the brutality of the murder in which predators inflict yeah. on prey. Um, but yet there's this beauty and reverence and spirit. There's a spirit to it. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, off with their heads, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nature, nature is brutal. You know, some of those videos, yeah. Instagram is quite a place for that. You know? Yeah, yeah. I follow this guy, Nature's Metal. I don't know if you follow that one, but brutal. I mean, just just savage. Like, like the one where there's like um, there's a hyena that's literally inside of an entire elephant. Just, okay. yeah, yeah, super. I, 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 can, I can picture it, yeah. yeah. I mean, completely covered in blood. It's the most grotesque, like, bloodlust thing. And it's uh -huh. like, but yet it's this, you would think like, oh, that's disturbing. And you have such contempt for this predatory kind of creature. But at the same time, there's this beauty of the circle of life and the continuation of, of energy in another form it's just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah man we we know the deal yeah. yeah yeah now do you do you do any hunting yourself or anything like that uh the extent of my hunting was just a few trips and uh with guns and you know fishing i've you know fished all my life i don't know if that's hunting or not but um yeah, yeah. i mean still it, it would get you fed yeah. for sure but uh no because i saw the ethic i saw the the rise of the bow hunter i've got a good friend of mine named matt Krishner. he's mm. a really really great bow hunter and mm. i um i kind of want to venture into that um if i'm going to do it i want to do it right so i really right, have right. to like be be in that headspace of mm -hmm. ancient ancient man you know yeah, what about you yeah. uh, same thing exactly kind of the same as what you're saying I, i'd love yeah. to I kind of aspire to do the bow hunting thing. Um, even in, in my my property now, it's not quite big enough. 
like I, I, the most I've done in the back is kind of throwing big throwing knives. You know, I just kind of mess around. I'd love to have the space to actually practice and just hone that in and just perfect mm. that and then go out and do it. Um, yeah. We have a, have a lot of buddies that are like cops as well. And uh, another buddy that's a gun fanatic. So he's, he's like, no, okay, we're going to bring a gun just in case, you know, there's bears and all this other stuff. And I was like, okay, you know, if we bring a gun, let's give it to the cops and just let them hold it, you know, <laughs> right. practice all the time at these ranges, you know, like I'm confident they'll, you know, if a bear charges us, everyone's going to freak the fuck out and not know what to do. I'm like, just give it to the cop. He'll know, he'll handle it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, bears I, are. I don't have much experience with guns. That's why. Yeah. I mean, I think like, um, you know, it's a mixed bag with guns. It's like, guns are already out of the bag kind of thing. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, you can't, you can't just destroy them all because yeah. there's obviously somebody's going to be hiding some and be like, yeah, let's get rid of the guns. And then someone's got, you know, yeah. whoever's got the stash is going to be at the, at the top really calling the shots. So mm -hmm. um, literally I mean, call they even destroy them. I mean, there's so many, right. I mean, in, in America. Yeah. There's so yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of over the border. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 there's a lot of guns but um i think it's like anything you know it's like anything that has great power should be held accountability like you should be accountable with great responsibility for this power and mm -hmm. that's where the knowledge comes in and and the and the respect and the connection and and um you know it's not it's not a freaking toy and yeah, uh yeah. so just proper training education yeah making you know yeah. It, it, yeah mental health is, is really what it's all revolving around. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's a great point, Adam. I think America has a gun problem masquerading around as a mental health problem. I think more than anything, Western civilization, um, because of the, the concept of new, everything's new because capitalism really focuses on what's new. Uh, it, it's not conducive to a sense of history. So mm -hmm. everyone is focused on what's new and what's new obviously is, down this linear line of what's better but not necessarily so when you understand it took lifetimes for people to develop one little piece of the puzzle that we just completely take for granted it's there's so much to history i think that that's that's the main achilles heel in america is that uh, the united states doesn't have much of it and you know to understand the context of where people immigrated to come to these countries, like even with the French and the English in Canada, you know, my grandfather's from Quebec and like, you see my mother's English and my, on my dad's side, they were French. So it's like, yeah, huge conflict. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even uh, I just did my 23 and me report. Uh, have you ever done one of those? The, did, I have. Thing? Oh, yeah. I got mine back. So it's all just littered with conflict throughout the generations everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it's it's very strange to think like um you know you could just be some kind of peaceful agriculturalist and then all of a sudden some savages just roll up and just like steal your wives and they murder yeah. your kids and just and that's really how the strength of human genes were propagated um so it wasn't this thing of like oh what was me i'm a victim it's just it's the fittest of the fittest we were animals you know it's like and it's like, um, you know, this notion of being civilized has only emerged from the surplus of food and commodities anyway. So it's like, it's all an illusion. The minute that the surplus of anything, or commodities and food gets taken away, we'll resort back to being a savage. And that's where being a civilized, enlightened kind of, um, you know, organic, like cultivated kind of spirit on this planet to, so you can offer skills and barter with skills and create communities of people because dude we're so screwed if the if the grid shuts if if a giant solar storm just spits out a freaking plasma you know like you know bam it happened actually in the late 19 uh 1800s early 1900s i think it was called the carrington event which was a solar storm that actually blacked out the entire grid for two weeks and then of course it happened in Toronto and LA and uh, in New York, mm -hmm. same kind of thing, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think this is when that happens. It's absolutely yeah. crazy. I remember going around and it's like people with flashlights in the streets trying to find 
places to get food because every, all the restaurants are closed. Everything's closed. You can't yeah. cook stuff at home. It gets real really fast, you know, like it, it goes there. So, yeah, yeah, that's like guys like you and I, you know, I mean, I see you have dogs and you're constantly exposing yourself to the hormetic, like environmental stresses. So you can, it's all about keeping the continuity of, of energy and data. Like you're aware of your environment. So you're always, you know, you're not bundled up in crazy layers all the time. You're like, yeah. nah, man, I'm just going to go swimming in that cold because I think that provides uh, vital information to keep you, your finger on the pulse of the awareness of where you are and the appropriate action that you need to take if circumstances do arise, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure if you've had any psychedelic trips, but I've had some and I'll be sitting in a room like this and I'm just thinking, this is a crazy space to be in, you know, these enclosed white walled perfect boxes when we put stuff up on them. And, you know, it's, it's a really weird thing. I actually had a, like a shroom trip going back a while ago and I was sitting with people that were completely sober. I was like the only one tripping at this point. Yeah. And all I, I just saw all just black space. It's like empty black. Have you ever seen stranger things? The first season, I think it was when she went into yeah. through deprivation and she was like walking around this black that like I experienced that and all these walls, houses, everything disappeared. I just felt like we were all in this empty floating sort of void, you know, and I, yes. and I experienced all these people within my neighborhood just floating as these like, and ev everyone was basically just like this energy floating in this black, empty space. So I, I take away a lot of these things from these, these experiences and really I'm, I experiment with them for that reason. And that's why I probably was the only one tripping at that point. I'm just like, I'm gonna have some fun right now and see what happens to you. <laughs> It's yeah. learning because all of a sudden I take that with me and I'm like, oh yeah, these things are just constructed. You know, these are just all temporary and to, to realize that and then to just immerse myself in, in uncomfortable situations, like going in the water, like I didn't really want to do it. Like, and that's kind of why I did it. You know, it's like, I had yeah. that last minute, like, should I really do this? And my wife's like, you might get hypothermia. How are we going to drive back? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how we, we'll see how it goes. So I just pop in. Yeah. You know, holding the camera and, and we'll just see. So it's like, you got to do those things to, to see the other side, to kind of get, to lift that veil, if you know, put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, it's, it's, um, it's a process of um, getting that fearful voice out of the way and discovering yourself on the other side of that fear. I mean, every, um, you know, and it's all relative, obviously, to people's kind of thresholds. You know, there's very, there's a, so many people in the world that are so sheltered and so conditioned and so myopic and so, just completely spoon fed by the system that um, they could live their entire lifetime and never really understand who they really are in terms of the thousands of lives that have lived and died to give them the body and the genetics and the ability to feel endorphins and the serotonin and the um, norepinephrine and just, and DMT that you're is inside of your body already. It's like this amazing, I think, it's interesting too the parallel that you can kind of draw between Western civilization compartmentalizing the scientific method into this kind of mechanistic thing and like guarding the little secrets, like in religion, guarding all the secrets. And then you start doing these visionary journeys with psychedelic plants and you realize how plants co evolved with us and that even though, you know, Western science terms these psychedelics as like primitive tribal behavior or rites of passage. It's interesting to, to look at that's actually more advanced and that mm -hmm. even like, for example, you know, they'll say Western science is still very, you know, reserved in, in proclaiming the benefits of uh, psychological benefits and emotional benefits with psychedelics. But yet the entire Silicon Valley has given birth to the tech revolution because they've all been using psychedelics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so it's, this, it's this kind of like, do as I say, not as I do type mentality. And I think the gig is up. I think people are starting to know more and more that whatever these chemicals are, the only reason why they work, these compounds work is because they mimic our own brain chemistry. These are substances that we've co-evolved with. And the, the reason why we have these visions and it's like this ancient technology that's just as much a part of who being human as anything else, like having sex or eating or doing anything, it's all part of us. And we have a right, not R I T E, but R I G H T as in, you know, 
you know how they are with their rites because that's more of a ritualistic thing. And then they, yeah. you know, they have this kind of like in a box where they say, well, you can do this, but you can't do that. You can have wine and bread and say it's God, but you can't take a mushroom and say that that's God. So mm-hmm. it's a, it's a bizarre world we're living in. Once you're able to grasp that perspective by doing those trips and in the contrast of being embedded in a Western civilization, just going, but it's still a great place to live. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, it's, uh, it's fine. finding balance between the, between the two of it. I mean, and I have people yeah. that are exactly like what you've described and they walk around with this sort of blind way of, of seeing things like they don't see that. And a lot of them haven't experimented with anything. And yeah, it's, it's really tricky because you have to engage with these people at that level in that way. But then at the same time, have this in the back of your mind and all, but it has to all be in like love and support because you have that in the back of your mind. It's just like kind of just trying to bang down and knock on doors all the time and try to open up people's, that's why I create content in in large part. And that's why, you know, I reach out to people such as yourself because I like to, to hold these discussions because the more, you know, the fast paced information age that we're in, I've had these trips too, where it's like, it's just like, just keep going, just keep creating, keep doing it because it's so fast. People absorb it so quickly. You know, kids coming up in the next 15, 20, 30 years, we're going to have new generations of these enlightened beings just purely from information, you know, like information deeply rooted in truth and, and what's real. I always talk about that on posts. And when I say that truth in reality, it differs when you ask someone, you know, that has a different state of thinking or just different state of being. For me, it's like what's what's truth is is being out like on that ice and feeling that that wind pass through me and then trying to, to get to that point where I can dissolve myself and just float with the wind, like fly like a bird, you know, like true shamanism type stuff and, and yeah. really get there. And because you are connected with that all, you know, and, and when I've done microdose DMT and stuff like that, it's it's I, I literally can see that I'm connected with all, you know, and it's it's this powerful feeling. So trying to carry that around is 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 tricky. It is tricky. <laughs> Carry that around and then hold a conversation with like some business something, you know? Like it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 you know, you would think that a supermarket would be a great place to strike that conversation up, but <laughs> no, no. It's it's like nowhere you can have these conversations except on these these platforms that we're creating, you know, and, and that's why yeah. I just keep doing it. Um, yeah. Actually, on that note, because we haven't really gotten to it, but I, could you just uh, introduce yourself, what it is you're involved with, um, for anyone that's listening? And, uh, and okay. Um, well, my name is David Moore, and I live in Miami, Florida. I'm 44 years old. Uh, I'm a father of, of four. I have two boys and two girls. And uh, I've been in the fitness industry as a trainer, but really I'm more of a revolutionary in a sense of just, um, I believe in the potential of, of human beings and that we haven't um, discovered, you know, truly who we are, that we're a species with amnesia. And uh, for me, I take part in that. Um, and I bring to, uh, a, you know, attention to various things that I think will benefit people emotionally, uh, physically, and uh, spiritually. So, um, you know, meditation, all of these various dif- disciplines that you can uh, create this epigenetic awareness of your environment and using your, your genes and your environment and your will to initiate and uh, ignite who you really are. The realization, the self-actualization, enlightenment, whatever that may be, you know, diligently pursuing that journey. That's what I'm all about. That's me. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. That's very well said. And I, and I love how you <coughs> said, uh, basically, that we had forgotten, in essence, you know, and it's, it's, it is like, it only takes a few generations. And all of a sudden, it's like, poof, you know, like a lot of information, such as psychedelics and the use of them. You know, how long has this Western, this Westernized society been around for to then just start to exclude these things and try and push them to the side? Yeah. It, it's pretty crazy. So it doesn't take long for us to start to forget, you know, but it's absolutely uh, true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in large part involved in very similar things as, as yourself. And uh, I know that you've been on like a lot of different covers of fitness magazines and you actually had an injury recently. Uh, can you just kind yeah. of get into that and the, the whole process of, of how that how that went down? Well, um, so unbeknownst to me, I have a, a pre I had a pre-existing heart condition. I still have it's a uh, it's an atrial myxoma. So I have a, a vegetative tumor. It's a benign tumor inside the wall of my atrium. And it doesn't really affect the, or impair the function of the heart, although um, I can get AFib every once in a while and have um, 
like uh, irregular heartbeats, things like that, which you know are somewhat alarming if you've experienced those. But um, so basically this tumor spit out a blood clot and I experienced three years ago um, a pulmonary embolism, which um, basically arrested my respiration within uh, an hour. And then I was rushed to the hospital and subsequently I was intubated because I wasn't able to breathe on my own. And they put a vent, I was on a ventilation machine in a coma um, pretty much disembodied consciousness for five days. And uh, during that process of uh, being in a coma for five days, it literally just felt like 30 seconds. And I remember I actually regained consciousness on my birthday, the night, um, 3 a.m. the day of my birthday. And um, I remember seeing myself above myself and realizing that um, what was going on, but in my mind, it only seemed like seconds had passed. And I regained consciousness and, and literally I actually physically extubated myself. So there's a lot of, you'll, if you go to my Instagram page, it's get more and you'll see like a photo I've posted on there. And it's literally, there's a, there's a huge apparatus and a lot of, um, a lot of very secure and tightly um, connected um, tubes, breathing tubes and wires. I mean, I literally was gasping for air. It's kind of like that scene in the matrix when uh, he pulls out the, you know, and pulls the thing off of his head and he's like mm -hmm. born in that yeah, crazy yeah. soup. It was kind of like that. It was like a rebirth. And uh, so I went to the other side and this is, you know, um, uh, that reawakening, that rebirth actually happened. I had already done ayahuasca uh, two times. So it was a very similar experience to the being in the DMT realm. Um, and actually when I did ayahuasca two years before, I actually, in retrospect, after waking up, I realized that the ayahuasca actually gave me visions about my embolism. So yeah, it's very strange. Actually, the shaman, mm -hmm. the shaman actually at the end of the ceremony took a piece of the bark and uh, of the, of the vine of ayahuasca and carved out a heart and gave it to me. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. And then two years later, I find out I have this, you know, you know, life threatening condition that they were going to open up my heart and all this stuff. So, um, it was very interesting. And, and one of the main kind of themes as I was, I set my intention during this ayahuasca, I asked three questions like, you know, why is, um, why are human beings so disconnected? Um, what is our, you know, purpose? And for me, I wanted healing. I wanted, um, I wanted to know, you know, I asked to know basically and to be healed. And I remember coming through the experience and at the very end, I remember disintegrating into the earth and like my, everything being taken away from me um, to when I was nothing and just kind of like melting into the rocks. And I remember there was this feminine presence like on top of me, like choking me. And um, she was kind of like very aggressively choking me and saying, cause I kept asking like, why, but why? Cause I'd shoot off into the, you know, astral plane come back and be like but why like you'd see all these wonderful crazy things and you go but well what is the purpose of all of this and at the very end it was like this presence was like love love is the ultimate um apex of information synthesized and personified in human form like love has any it's such a corny word i wish there was another word for love, but when you're doing these trips or when you wake up from a near death experience and you're able to speak that word love with all that it can grasp in the universe, like that word love, it's like, this is, this is the mind blower is that none of us would be here if it wasn't for love. Every single person is on this earth because someone put themselves second and you first. And that, that chain, that continuation of love has, has, I mean, children die without love, you know, it's like they need to be touched, they need to be held. So it's a passing of this energy. And uh, it was a fascinating, fascinating journey and a fascinating reawakening. And it's really led me to um, just really talk about um, the true nature of life and that we are, we're in a place in a realm uh, of experience that has been um, the architects of this world, and I say this world, I mean like, you know, the socially conditioned aspects of civilization and the, and the priests and all these people that say that they have a monopoly on knowledge and technology and all this stuff. They, uh, they've created a simulation and we, we live in a, sim, in a simulation, uh, you know, since the day we we're born, we're conditioned to perceive things 
And uh, we, we know that, that most energy, most situations, you get a phone call. It's like you get happy. Well, weren't you already happy? Did you need a phone call to make you happy? Happiness is already inside of you. So it's this, this thing of understanding like there's a, a, this tremendous amount of data and energy and information out here beyond our senses. And you start realizing that the chains are basically in our minds. They don't, people throw the blame. They, you know, they point fingers and look at everyone else and this person's trying to keep me down or this color or this, you know, people are being disenfranchised or people being marginalized or whatever that shit is. It's all, it's all really bullshit. Um, and that is just, that kind of energy is just another permutation of what the architects of this planet want us to be caged in. If we all just said it's a requirement for public office to do a psychedelic trip, then we would be very confident in our leaders, I guess. But mm -hmm. <laughs> at, well, at this point, uh, yeah, a lot of leaders, I think, well, a lot of people stepping up to become leaders are starting to be those ones that have done those things, you know, whether they say it or not. And I think it's like a slow infiltration, if you want to call it of yeah. that system. And it's just playing the game. It's just understanding the game yeah, and, and just, just kind of hacking it in a way. And I think that people do come to planet earth with their calling inside of them already. And, and mm. then it's, they, it's just, they get distracted with all of what you just said, these external stimuli and they lose that calling. So just a forgetfulness again. So it's just coming to realization and then aligning to that calling and then sort of being confident and moving forward with it is really important. And I think that you had mentioned uh, your, your ayahuasca trip kind of gave you some foreshadowing of your, your upcoming uh, heart condition. Mm -hmm. I, and a lot, a lot of cultures believe that the dreams teach us and ayahuasca obviously being native to the, to the DMT as well, but dreams do, I believe, teach us. I'm, I'm big on lucid dreams, focusing on that, trying to understand because I do think that they sort of show us the way and guide us towards that, you know, inner path that is our highest purpose, our greatest good that I think mm -hmm. everyone does have. And, I, and actually even something I, I've started practicing recently is um, I, I downloaded Muslim Assist, which is like just a, a Muslim app it notifies me every prayer time of the day. And I take those times to try and reconnect with that, you know, that inner purpose and that mm. love because it, it's, it's just there all the time. And again, we just like, I'll get a phone call, like you said, or I'll get a notification or I'll get all these dopamine shots and everything else. And it just gets confusing and, and lost, you know, lost in the cluster. So it's just a matter of deeply connecting and jumping in the water and stuff like that. That's a great way to do it as well. Cause all of a sudden you have to be connected with it. It's yeah, like, yeah. like this is, well, this is different. You know, I don't experience like that's recently, that was one of the coldest things I've done in, in a long time. That was pretty damn cold. So yeah, like, that was, that was ep epic, man. That photo of you is just so it's yeah. like, it's so Wim Hof esque, but yet it's like, it's you, it's like, it's different. It's just that, just the landscape and how um, entirely alien that world looks with you with being bare skinned and just like, yeah. it's, it's just a fantastic image, man. It really, um, yeah, I think I thought, uh, I thought it was good. Thought, and it actually cleared yeah. up. They're so crazy here. Like it's already gone up to plus something. Now it's starting to melt. It was like the opportunity to do it was just then if it comes, yeah. I'm going to hop back in. When you come to Toronto, if, it's, if it hits that cold, it's so weird. Like the weather drops out of nowhere for three days. We just get hit with a crazy storm and then it disappears a week later. It's like, yeah. you know, if you, bizarre, if you, right? in climate change, like, yeah, I've, I'm seeing some damn climate change. That's for sure. Like it gets yeah. crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. But I think that's, and maybe, maybe that's the mother's uh, intelligence too trying to shake us and wake us up from this kind of like seasonal sleep pattern that we're always in of just thinking mm -hmm. like this is normality the four seasons well maybe it's not maybe mm -hmm. maybe you know we're 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 being perturbed we're being you know shaken up you know mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. that's the thing is like uh when you hear the calling and you go out it's like for me it's down here it's the sun it's uh so i'll you know maybe i'll do a microdose of um psilocybin and i'll just I'll wake up and watch the sunrise and it's just like the most epic thing. It's literally God just, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's just that, that once that light just touches your skin, it's like it, 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 you cease to be a person. You are part of the continuum of light energy that's just spreading itself through the universe. You're just connected and uh, the warmth and the, and that glow and the, and the energy and just feeling like home. You just, I just feel like I'm home, you know, it's a, uh, it's this magical 
place that when you were a kid and you first got like your telescope or you got like a magnifying glass, it was just magic was everywhere, you know? And it's like you slowly uh, get, you know, uh, institutionalized. And uh, then you kind of lose that wonder uh, of who, who you are and, and the miracle of, you know, what the human organism is. It's just, it's a, uh, it's a mind blower. So I think in regards to just, you know, being a martial artist or training or, you know, putting like, I use this metaphor of like Pinocchio, you know, it's kind of like, you know, Pinocchio had to evolve to become a real boy and he was born with these strings, but he resented the fact that he was a puppet, but it's like, we're all puppets. We, one day we wake up and we realize we are puppets. Like everything, our job, you know, our, people's expectations of us and all these things. And it's like, every, every time you say, I don't want to do that, you clip another string until one day you're just, you have no mobility anymore. You can't do anything. So being a statue is worse than being a puppet. You have to be a puppet first so that embrace who you are and know I'm going to learn, I'm going to learn how to use these strings until one day I'm my own master, you know? And then you realize like your higher self is that master. It's always been that way, but you've always, uh, you've always thought that this, you know, string puller was somebody external, somebody in, in the world that was the boogeyman trying to get you. But I think um, eventually you're transformed. And of course, you can, you know, the other side of that story is, is if you become a liar, then everyone's going to know it because you're going to have a big fat nose. Everyone's mm -hmm. going to know that you're a liar. You can't hide being a liar. That's the point of the story is that the more lies you tell, the more that you distort your your form in this reality and i think that that's it's pinocchio is such an awesome like story about it is, what it, it means to be human you know yeah do you are you listening to jordan peterson at all he oh yeah he, about pinocchio like i've listened to his lectures on it actually at the university of toronto he held a whole lecture series just on like breaking down pinocchio it was amazing so when you went yeah. into that i was like wow yeah i think he described um uh, the cricket is, it was a consciousness representative of consciousness. Uh, yeah. Just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Is amazing. A lot of these Disney stories, you know, and that's actually, it's funny because that, that's the architecture right there, right? That's just, building, it is. you know, and showing it right to you and being like, here you go. You, you like it, right? You probably like this. Why do you like it? I don't know. We don't know. <laughs> you know, that's the whole thing. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 My daughters too, when you notice, like I have two eight year old twin girls and of course, you know, the, the, the modern kind of uh, paradigm in regards to young girls growing up is they always identify with the Disney princess, you know, which is the kind of coddled, um, self-entitled, self-indulgent, beautified, like perfect little girl who, who is afraid to work, you know? And uh, then you have the, the alter ego of, of girls, which is kind of like, you know, the darker, she wears makeup, she's the wicked witch, she has powers, she's enchanting, she talks to nature, she has a bird and, and, and different enchantments, you know, like a witch. It's mm -hmm. kind of like, they're already creating that division between, wait a second, you're, you're both of these things. And don't stigmatize yourself if you identify with the wicked witch because she's not wicked it, to, if she has powers to talk to nature, if she has persuasive abilities, if she has knowledge and science that she's using to create spells. But they already categorize you and you identify with that and then you're stuck with that label. So then therefore you go down your entire life thinking that you're the bad person, you're the enemy, you're the adversary in this whole thing when you're both. It's better to be, I would say, if I was a little girl growing up, and this is what I try to teach my daughters, is that it's better to identify because most of the time it's the rejected, they associate the rejected animalistic nature and, and humans' uh, connectedness to nature to the evil characters. And it's completely uh, misrepresenting, um, you know, and, and labeling evil on these uh, women who have this kind of enchanting nature connection. And, um, you know, I think that's something that's going to brush off eventually too, because there's the world's full of too many princesses. We know that mm -hmm. too many princesses, you know, they spoiled, they spoiled the castle, man. There's too many princesses out there expecting everything, yes. but not rolling their sleeves up and, you know, connecting to their own virtuous power that is resonant. If they connect to the earth, they can channel that and just like, there, the, the power that and the, the and the beauty and the awe that 
that women have when they're connected. It's just, I see it with my daughters. It's like, it's mind blowing, you know, it's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I I think, I think young girls, I mean, in the future, that's going to be my focus is working more with women and working more um, with single moms and stuff to get them to kind of like, you know, brush off the whole, you know, uh, you know, men stigma, the whole thing of just the way the dying social dynamics are and how they feel kind of like disenfranchised and depressed and the, the burden of responsibility of raising kids is all on them and stuff. It's like, I think it's a, just a return to that virtuous aspect of the graceful woman, like the true expression of like this uh, earthly motherly power that they have, you know? Mm-hmm. I envision like a lioness or something like that, you know, like something yeah. that's powerful, but like, you know, and, and take care of the young and just to really just do it all and just like reside in that, just rest in that power and just be confident. Exactly. It. It's exactly. like what you described is like the, uh, it reminded me of the Salem witch trials, like where they would take that yeah. darker one and then they just cast her out. And then, you know, um, my wife's more on the, on the, the kind of earthy, groundy, hippie type of chick side. So she's uh, if she was in the room right now she would have gone off when you started talking about that stuff she's like yeah you know these damn patriarchy this and that all stuff is like yeah she goes on about it even when i say something she's like well that's awfully masculine and i'm like hey listen here like let's not even get into this teens thing okay Matt. right whatever it's like that's a whole yeah. other conversation whole other can of worms um, yeah because even before i've had trips where i've just been like i've just been talking to someone again they're, they're sober too and then uh, they're like, well, you wouldn't even know how it is to be a woman. I can literally just like close my eyes in that trip and be like, you know, I, I can live that life right now. And it's, uh, you know, I can experience a, a general understanding of it. And even I try to be aware of that as I go around just how it would be to, you know, I was standing next to some, some girl recently, she was like four foot nothing. And I was like, wow, you are the smallest little, this was like a, when I say girl, she's a grown woman, but it's like the smallest little thing. And I'm like, wow, to walk around the world like that man and i'll try and stay in that space i'll probably may stay that all afternoon i'll keep thinking about it you know and it's like just taking that time to come to that understanding and just yeah. up in those shoes i think it's really important but i don't think that stuff is taught in, in the disney movies as much i think it is kind of like making these separate teams and this you know good and bad and then you got to be this or that it's like no you're at all you're everything and you're nothing Ta-da, you know like <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> And it's amazing too when, um, you know, the affinity that individuals have towards their, um, their identification with these characters, these archetypes. And uh, for, for me, it was always the underdog, the guy, like the Rocky character who always got knocked down but got back up or the Jesus kind of archetype. All these people, you know, you, it surprises you that you're, uh, what you perceive as myth and what you identify with resonates so much in you and shapes your life throughout your you know all of your life and um it's a it's a very interesting thing to contemplate this because you oftentimes are left with the uh, the absolute knowing of what you think about you become and what you identify with you create around you and you gravitate towards and you attract and i think that you know there's a lot of people that want to go to heaven but they don't want to die there's a lot of people that want to be like christ but they don't want to suffer there's a lot of people that want to go to these places, but they don't want to do the work. They don't want to put in the effort. They don't want to, they don't want to cut off what they need to cut off so they can, you know, tune in to what needs to be tuned into. And, um, you know, that's where, that's where that identification with those archetypes and the realization that this is not by accident, that this is really who you are. And that if you're looking for something other than that, you're wasting your time because you know, they say when you, you show me the boy that's seven and I'll show you the man, you know, all of us in our formative years were created in those first seven years. And you can, you can identify with anything you want as an adult, but it's ultimately can be boiled down to this kind of reduction of, of these very, very um, impactful, very influential, um, uh, powerful stimulus that was from your zero when you were born to your seven years old. And, uh, you know, it gets, it gets convoluted. It gets complex because the ego gets involved and we rationalize, you know, doing things um, for all types of reasons that have nothing really to do with the one reason of why we're here and our purpose. And it, um, it's, it's, it's a sad, unfortunate thing for a lot of people. But if you're willing to just look, if you're willing to just 
turn everything off, if you're willing to fast, if you're willing to go out in the cold, if you're willing to just wipe the slate clean, if you're willing to do a psychedelic journey, if you're willing to just work out, if you've been a slob all your life, if you're just, if you just give yourself that one chance to just turn everything off, you know, close your mouth and don't eat, just don't turn any electronics on, on for one week, just go into isolation, do something you'll find that that something inside of you that was eluding your whole life will automatically turn on and you'll feel that closeness to that part of who you are and you'll feel so close that you won't want anybody else or anything else to come in between it. And then at that point, it just becomes this process of, of cultivating it and creating and observing and influencing and sharing. And uh, it's, dude, Adam, it's, uh, by the way, Adam, uh, Adam has been a real influential figure in, in my life in the past two years. I've met 10 Adams in the past two years that have all been super cool. Um, like some of them business with, some I have great personal friendships with, some of them psychedelic relationship, uh, psychedelic journeys with, some I've, 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 you know, I'm doing business with now in Toronto, as a matter of fact, um, there's another Adam. So, um, there's something to this, um, this Adam, you know, uh, yeah. the first, the first I man, so. you know, I think so. yeah, yeah. When, I, when I've had uh, trips, I've had that, uh, that sort of, uh, I don't even know what you want to call it. Just insight. It's like you are to represent first man, first cause, be like the highest version of yourself. You can attain work towards that. All else is, is delusion. That's it. Mm. And it's yeah. like, if you don't do that, you're doing yourself, not only yourself an injustice, but all those around you because you're not serving them with your gift that you were given, that you're born. Like that's, that's the purpose. So yeah, it's interesting. And I think, I think we all have our given our names and uh, someone, someone read something to me before that broke down my name. I can't even remember what it was, but I really like going through those because it, it does offer some insight. It's, it's pretty neat to think about because it, it's like, doesn't that just happen? You know, that the names were given because it's like, there's gotta be a reason for it. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, we are, I, you know, my, my prayer for humanity at this juncture and just for what, you know, what's happening. I'm very excited to see how everything's transforming right now, but I think, um, you know, unfortunately there's going to be people that left are left behind and I, and I, um, uh, you know, these, these phones are the seeds of our next life. And I hope that, people can start like really, really like being honest with themselves and not, you know, not running away from the person that in their most private moments, what they do is really who they are. And, and I think like that transparency of knowing like who you are, whether you're in front of a thousand people or you're by yourself in your underwear, if you're the same person and you don't have any shame and you can just be like, I'm a goddamn human being, man, I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can, if you can just stand before yourself and look yourself in the eyes and say, you know, yeah, you fucked that one up. You're a bonehead and you screwed it up. But you know what? Uh, you're going to give yourself another shot, man. You can try to do better. And uh, it's just, I forgive you. It's always just, I forgive you. You know, when that's you it. Put up to that higher self. It's, it's just like, why are you even offering this to me, man? Like, forgive yeah. me. Go. Yeah. Love. Go. Do you. You know, yeah. that's it. It's just, it's, it's not even like a second thought. And when, when yeah. I experiences it's like it's just dissolved right there then and there like whatever it is it could be absolutely oh. anything you know it's and there's so many so many that that right there just that right there adam is so powerful and so profound because we live in an, in uh in a society um that is constantly oppressing um this um natural evolutionary process of making mistakes it's like if you, if in the future, if CRISPR and all these things that are going to, you know, influence humans to be born perfect, they've already, you know, done the movie Gattaca or whatever, where they trivialized it, but, and uh, they did creative license with it. But this, the concept is really simple. If you don't make mistakes, you can't learn to be wise. The mistakes are the best things about us. That's the, what that the flaws. Oh, sorry about that. Some goofy phone came through. That's but right. uh, the flaws are the, really the beauty. They're, they're the ultimate resource. The, the mistakes are the ultimate resource. That's where the, you know, the little notches and grooves and scars and, and memories and, and just the character gets built through these little things. It's like, and, and for them to rob us in the future and under the guise of, we're going to make your, 
your life, you know, profoundly better and let your, your suffering is going to disappear. No, dude, suffering. We love, we need suffering because it, like Rumi said, you know, the deeper the suffering in the vessel, the more joy it can carry. These are things that are uniquely human and bring us all to tears. But that's because we've all felt loss and pain and suffered. If none of us lose and pain and suffer and mistake, then none of us will well up with tears and know what it means to this beautiful song, like this song and symphony of what it means to be a human being, man. I mean, it's like this old saying in the Bible. It's like, you know, we're the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its savor, you know, that's what makes us flavorful, man. We can't lose mm -hmm. the, 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 you know, they're, they're doing us like they're doing factory farming. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. they're taking, yeah. they're taking, yeah. taking all the minerals and nutrients out of the soil and the soil is the soul, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like uh, David Goggins, actually. I'm not sure if you caught some of his stuff recently. He, he says something about wringing out his soul. Like he's here to really like, just wring it all out, leave it all out, you know, just, yeah. just like just every last drop, just get everything you can out of it. And, and I, when I think about it, I almost think of uh, like we're multidimensional beings experiencing one aspect of it is uh, that it is to be an expression, a creative expression, that aspect yeah. is to be human, you know? So it's like we have these other expressions, but we, we, we take away everything from it and we feed that soul. It's all food for the soul from all these things. And we're kind yeah. of not doing it justice if we're not having those human experiences and we are having that kind of white whitewashed way of living grayed out you know type of way of living like living in these boxes here instead of you know experiencing the elements you know it's just it's dumbing things down for us that it's not giving us that feedback that food for the soul so but yeah. again uh, conversations like this are wonderful so um and Great I, point. I think, I think um that, that's where we could uh we could end it because uh it's almost it's been about almost an hour but um did you have cool. anything else you wanted to quickly share with anyone that people can check you out anywhere i'll include all yeah. the as well in the video description so yeah so um just um a little follow-up to that pulmonary embolism after being revived and uh you know really kind of focusing on what it's like to basically um almost die and then kind of regain my own breath i realized that breathing was such a profound way to transform your life and i think um so i developed the first respiratory enhancement product that's used for training you can use it for yoga you can use it for crossfit you can use it for anything in the shower in the morning you can spray the mist in the air um you can use it in spa and sauna you can spray it on the hot rocks um you know it's it's a great product i use it it opens up the nasal pathways and it opens up the bronchial pathways so you get more oxygen saturation and a lot of people don't know this but it's backed by 100 percent um sound science it's uh, 80 percent of fat is excreted through the lungs so we actually metabolize and break down fat into its constituents and we exhale fat so that's why hit training works really well the more you breathe the more you're metabolizing fat so um it's getflow2.com that's the product i believe in it's the part of my life it's not some white label powder junk that's out there but it's something that came from my heart and soul that hopefully it's going to you know, change the way people see their opportunity to breathe every day and breathe fully and correctly and uh, adjust their perceptions and appreciate the gifts they have in their immediate environment and spread love and, and work. <laughs> yeah. So that's what to put in that work. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. I actually did see that product. I saw, I think I clicked one of your links or something. I was checking it out and reading through it. it looked really interesting. And it's great cool. that that came of your experience, you know, because mm that's out of suffering comes those things, you know, out of those experience you have that. And when you have it like that, that's when it's successful. That's when it does well. You know, yeah. it's not when you're just trying to force it to happen, it just comes yeah. to you naturally and it's brought to you in this way. And uh, yeah, I think it's wonderful. So I'll definitely include the link to that as well. And um, yeah, I, everything else is like, do you have a YouTube channel? I do, but uh, it's, it's nothing that has anything profound. Like we spoke about. It's just mostly instructional fitness stuff, but that's cool. Um, yeah, but just um, just get more in, on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram. You can find me. Get more. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for taking the time, and uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll, we'll we'll speak again. I'd love to have another chat. And um, yeah, do you have a podcast yourself? No, I don't have a podcast yet. Um, That'd be really like, cool too. Yeah, you're so like passionate to do that. about stuff, and even if you like kind of highlight even what you were saying about women and bringing women on and you know, really yeah. showcasing them and, and their, their abilities. That's one thing I've been meaning to get more women on, on this podcast because uh, I've only had a few 
and uh, it's just something I think that they have such a just a voice that needs to be heard. You know, uh, somebody. Abs- uh, yeah, absolutely. But but who are you to give them their voice? No, I know, I know. <laughs> and my platform here, right? Like, exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. When does it end? Yeah. I know, man. You just have to throw your hands up and go. Look, I'm just trying to help. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Like, that's it. Just trying to help. Yeah, man. All right, Adam. It was great talking to you, brother. I'll see you in Toronto. Yes, for sure.